I want to go ahead and thank everybody for for joining us. I'm Tony. I'm so excited to have you here today. This is the best. Thank you so much. No, no problem. Stoked to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so I don't want to give you too like too long of an introduction because I don't want to take anything away from you. So I guess we can just go ahead and hop in. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about like your background and your story and how we got to where we are? Sure, definitely. So currently, I am a content creator and sales associate for a small paint company in Orlando, Florida called Florida Paints. I am actually still a senior marketing student at Ohio University, just doing it all virtual like you guys are. Um, so a little bit about myself. I started working at Sherwin-Williams when I was 18 years old in Akron, Ohio. Um, Really, I was just doing it as a part-time job to um, get through community college. I went to Tri-C first to get my associate's degree before moving to Athens. So I worked there for about three years as a part-time sales associate. Um, in May of what was it? May of 2019, I actually moved to Athens to further my uh, business education at Ohio University. And I transferred to the Sherwin Williams down there on uh, State Street. And from there, you know, I just did the normal thing, um, worked at the paint store. I actually really, really enjoyed working for Sherwin Williams Paint Company, just paint in general. Um, I felt it was a really important industry. Um, if you think about it, really, everything really does need painted. So that's where I fell in love with my passion for paint was working at Sherwin Williams, understanding the importance for the coatings industry. So last December, I um, downloaded TikTok, just like a lot, a lot of people did. And I saw that people were making paint videos at their local stores, basically just showing the process of a gallon of paint being mixed. Me, like I said, liking my job, um, wanting to show the world what I did and how important color and paint is to everyone and everything. I decided to make a few videos on TikTok, you know, just having fun with creating content, doing all that. And the videos took off almost immediately. So I kept making the videos in my spare time. We all know that Athens, Ohio, isn't really the busiest place when it comes to construction, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. So I had a lot of downtime. So I continued making the TikTok videos, eventually expanded into Instagram and YouTube. And at one point, I believe it was in March, I, you know, being the marketing student that I am, I decided to make a pitch deck to bring to Sherwin Williams about you know, how this content could be beneficial to the company's brand and developing brand awareness to a younger generation of future homeowners. So my pr thought process behind it was, um, like I said, develop brand awareness. So I developed the pitch deck, brought it to my manager and sales rep in Athens, Ohio, and they forwarded me to marketing at Sherwin Williams to further the, I guess, further the process of getting the presentation seen. And at that point, Sherwin Williams kind of blew it off. They um, told me that there wasn't really a need for them to see the presentation or they didn't really have time for it. Um, you know, with COVID and everything on, I completely got it. People were busy. And so I kept making the videos, but I decided to start putting my own creative spin on the videos. So I started buying my own paint and did like, I guess, more creative ways to make the content. Like the one that is most known is the one where I actually tinted a gallon of paint with blueberries. So there was that one. 
And then eventually Sherwin Williams, uh, I guess they had gotten a customer complaint about the videos. And from that, they do, decided to fire me for gross misconduct, basically doing stuff on the job that I shouldn't have been doing. So after that, um, I had developed like 800,000 followers on TikTok. So it's not like I wanted to stop making the videos. So I continued to make videos in actually one of my friend's basements. Um, just kept making the videos for that period of time. And at a certain point in November, I, after doing research on developing content, developing a brand, I wanted to create an emotional connection with my audience and my followers. So I decided to make a story time video of myself and how I had gotten fired from Sherman Williams, essentially. And from there, the media had gotten hold of the story, um, reached out to me a ton, did a bunch of interviews, and the story took off. Um, it really helped my journey and my brand. And from that point, I had received job offers or marketing offers from uh, basically almost every paint company in the United States. And I chose to work with a company called Florida Paints down here in Orlando because um, after working for a bigger corporation, I wanted to go to a smaller paint company because they were going to give me more creative freedom, I guess, with my content. And that is where it has landed me today. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, so mm -hmm. question for you, and I, I already know the answer, but for everybody <laughs> that's, that, that's watching, um, do you happen to have the marketing campaign that you put together for Sherwin-Williams? I do. Would we you like me to pull it up? It. <laughs> so Tony, while we're, um, working on pulling up that deck. Are you able to kind of tell us a little bit about I guess, how you got the idea of, I mean, what's interesting about your content is you're stirring paint and it sounds so simple, but it's so mesmerizing to watch. Where did you kind of get the idea to, to kind of approach it that way? So I had always enjoyed mixing paint colors while working at the paint store. Um, after about, after a few years of working there, I developed a sense of how it all worked and which colors blend together in the right ways. Um, so that's where I figured that out. Let me pull up the. Uh... But yeah, I mean, it really is some. It, I'm starting to bring like color theory into it because I believe that's super important. Um, you know how colors really affect our daily moods and routines which is actually crazy how that all works. And um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's how I got my, my idea for all that. Did you get the presentation? I did, I'm downloading it now. Cool. So while I'm pulling that up, we can. Are you okay with taking maybe a question or two? Of course, I'd love to. Okay, cool. Um, Emily, give me one sec. I'm gonna give you the ability to enable your mic if that's okay. Hey, Rachel. Hey. Hey. Um. Hey, I just want to say something that I find really cool about this story so far is sure. the like human connection element. I'm the communications and theater program manager at Hawking, and what I heard from you is that a big catalyst for your success on this campaign was when you found that ability, a different way to tell your story, and that really created a connection. So, right. you know, I'd love to hear more about that. I wanna see this presentation, too. I think this is really interesting. But I like that extra okay. element, too, about the human connection. Right. So after doing a bunch of research on social media, developing a brand, um, creating content, it really is important. One of the biggest factors of that is developing that emotional co connection with your audience, basically developing that trust and um, attention. What I wanted to do at that point in my 
uh, career, I guess you could say, or point in the pages was giving my audience a reason why I do what I do and why I love to do it. So that is something that I wanted to emphasize on my page and basically let everyone know that was the reason why. Is it frozen? No, it's not frozen. You're good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's essential. Yeah, and then we'll do um, maybe one more question, and, and then we'll get to your deck. I've got it pulled up here. So, um, Patty, I believe you were next. I'll go ahead and give you the ability to enable your mic if you would like. Um, you should be good to go. Hi, um, I just was wondering, like, you know, when they didn't want to hear your presentation, um, I know me personally, I would feel defeated, but how did you keep from not being, or like feeling like you were defeated? What made you want to keep pushing on to, you know, show everybody what you got? And I guess to right. me, I'd kind of, with you succeeding the way you are, it's kind of shoving it in their face, like, ha ha, look what I can do. And you neglected right. not to want to see it. Right. So basically, so when I guess my I, question is, you know, how did you. What was the question? Like, yeah. how, how did you keep yourself inspired to keep going and not give up on something because a big company just kind of said, eh, we don't have time for you? Sure. So. I would say that was about nine months down the road after developing my social media platforms. At that point, I had put too much work and time and thought into those into the channels that I it really wasn't even going to be an option for me to just stop making the the videos. Um, you know the 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 part about it was that Sherwin Williams never even actually saw the pitch deck, right? So I knew what I was doing. I knew my true intentions with the whole thing. A lot of other people did as well who actually heard me out and saw what I was doing. And I wasn't really going to let some, I guess, guy in a suit and tie in a different state dictate that for me. So that was my thought process behind that, that scenario. And I, I, I had different ways to get supplies for – keep continuing the pages. Like I said, I asked my friends if I could basically set up a light box in a studio in their basement, and they were cool with it. So it really just fell all into place after after the whole Sherman Williams, Sherman Williams thing. I mean, it sucked at first, but essentially it was just a part-time job, and it was a part-time job that helped me find my passion for creating color and coatings for other people. Awesome. Thank well, you, Patrick. You pushed on. I mean, sounds like you're doing great. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> and then Rosemary, we'll get we'll um we'll go ahead and do your question and then we'll get to the marketing deck next. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, so um from what I have heard from Ms. Jacobs is that um, you were going to OU, correct? Right. What were you going for? And like, I guess, like, how did you go from what you were going to school for to learning this whole, you know, new career pretty much? Sure, definitely. So actually the two tie, to get, tie in together, I was a marketing major. Well, still am a marketing major at OU. And, um, you know, we actually did a lot of research and talked a lot, a lot about um, social media marketing in in my classes in the business school. So when this pitch deck was actually developed, I guess with the help of four of my marketing professors at OU. So really, I just tied the two and two together. But if I'm going to be honest with you, I would say that a decent amount of my research and um, – I guess knowledge about how this all works came from, you know, just Google searches, blogs, 
YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff. Because that's where I felt like I really got the real perspective of how this all works for creating content. But being in a student at OU for marketing was very helpful too. Thank you for answering my question. No problem. I think that's a perfect segue into the deck actually. Right. <laughs> so I'm just gonna let everyone know, keep in mind this was developed when um, I believe I had just about 40,000 followers on TikTok. So it's pretty old. But it still has the same idea in what I was trying to portray to Sherwin Williams. Do you just want me to run through it as, I've, as if I was presenting it? Yeah, it, whatever you want. It's your show. So if you kind of want to go through um, maybe – the the campaign or the I guess the idea that you had for Sherwin Williams um, and you sure. can just tell me when to click to the next slide. Awesome, I can do that. So yeah, basically the title slide says it all. What I was trying to do, uh, so an opportunity just to create a different way to create brand preference in a newer generation of paint users. And you can click over. So I did an analysis of Sherwin Williams' current social media pages. Um, they were on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, 1,500 posts on Instagram. Their Facebook page had over 500,000 likes, 150,000 Twitter followers. And basically what their pages demonstrate is a lot of before and afters, product demonstration, and color promotions. And you can click over to the TikTok slide. I ran in through an analysis of TikTok. As we all know, it's a short video-based social networking platform. Showcases talents, dancing, comedy, comedy creativity. Um, the algorithm of TikTok is a lot newer and different than social media platforms. It actually, I guess, renders the trends a little bit more in what – it actually is pretty good at adapting to what it, you want to see on there. And this was early on in TikTok, but people were, this was just the start where people were starting to use promotional strategies to increase uh, product sales. And we can click over to TikTok in depth. All right, cool. Yeah, this is just a little chart I found on Statista showing the rate of the TikTok growth, user growth. There's about 40 million users in the United States. That 16 to 24 age um, was the average user age, which was something super important I wanted to emphasize to Sherwin Williams. The thing about the paint industry is the main customers and consumers are homeowners and contractors, right? Homeowners are people usually above the age of 25 or 30. Contractors, you know, traditional, how they purchase their paint and all that kind of stuff. And um, my whole thing, what I actually learned at Sherwin-Williams when I first started was the reason the paint industry is so important is literally everything, if you think about it, needs to be painted and will be painted at some point. You can't start new construction without paint. Um, people, The paint industry boomed throughout COVID because of people wanting to renovate, being at home, stuff like that. It really is an industry that will never die and will always continue to grow. So if you... If any of you guys are into stocks, invest into the coatings industry. Um, and another little thing I put in there were companies that were using TikTok, Chipotle, NBA, Pepsi, Universal. And we can go to the next one. So I ran through a little uh, informational slide about my page. Um basically showing my account growth um, 
7.5 million video views since March. I believe this was put in, this was made in April. Um, and the hash, hashtags are also super important on TikTok. I put the hashtag paint mixing has over 80 million views on the platform. So something what I was just trying to do is just emphasize the Sherwin Williams that there is engagement and there is some sort of acknowledgement to these satisfying paint mixing videos on the platform. And these were just some sample videos that I had put together for the presentation. Can you play those or are they or is it not like that? Seems like it plays. Cool. So, yeah, basically, TikTok utilizes a lot of trending sounds, too, which was, it's a lot different than other social media platforms. Um, it pushes out trending songs, stuff like that. So if you utilize those songs and hashtags that people are interacting with, and just putting it to, to simple things like mixing a gallon of paint, it just has the potential to reach more users and get more engagement. So this is the slide where obviously we need the opportunities and risk slide to present to the company. The opportunities were there, um, brand recognition, open up new credit and DIY accounts due to the recognition, um, reach millions of consumers globally. That was probably the biggest emphasis on there is reaching that, that large amount of uh, people, promote our premium gallons, promote projects, and then early adoption of new and popular platform before competitors. Um, that's actually pretty funny. I forgot about that one. And the risks were security is a frequent concern on TikTok. Um, as we all know, I think last year was when Donald Trump like was saying that TikTok was like a Chinese spy website. So he, there was like that that controversy behind it. Um, and then obviously COVID nineteen monitored to current events. And then the goal slide work with I wanted to work with the marketing and social media departments to develop this platform, advertise and promote Sherwin Williams, produce high quality content for the Sherwin Williams brand, reach new consumer base with brand recognition, brand preference, get ahead of competitors. And that essentially was the slide deck I was like would have liked to share to Sherwin Williams. Awesome. Yeah, this is right. Honestly, this is so good. And what I mean, I'm biased because I'm the marketing teacher, but um, you did such a good job with with highlighting that this opportunity exists with this target. Um, right. You talked about, you know, the 16 to 24 age range. They're about to be homeowners and it's a huge wave of people that they can take advantage of in order to, you know, sell their product. It's such a missed right. opportunity, but it's you really put a lot of thought into this. It looks so good. Um, and here, oh, oh, another thing that I found extremely interesting, you made this deck in April? Yes. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I wrote down that you had 42.2 thousand followers at that point. Yes. And then on TikTok. On TikTok. So when the BuzzFeed article came out, I believe you had 1.2. And then yes. today I checked. 1.6. Right. So that a, a big thing that I learned with social media and developing your channel 
is the number one is consistency by far. Like that is the most important rule of social media. You have to keep creating content, being consistent with it. Because if you think about it, you're not going to want to follow or engage with an account that is not active, right? So my second rule of it is engaging with your followers. Um, I like to engage with my audience, liking their comments, commenting back. And sometimes on my videos, you can do um, video comments on TikTok. So you can literally reply to someone's comment with a video. So what though someone will request a certain color for some reason, and I'll literally reply back to that video or to that comment with an, a video of their color request. Nice. Yes. That allows for some great engagement. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Yes. Cool. And you said that was number two. You So um, I guess this is a good time to kind of go into your strategy that you you follow for growing your, your base with TikTok and Instagram. I do have the numbers here. Um, so 1.6 on TikTok today. Uh, and mm -hmm. I believe you've hit a milestone with YouTube as of today. Yeah, just a few hours ago, I hit 200,000 subscribers. Congratulations. Thank you. That's so exciting. Thank you. <laughs> Cool. So yeah. So um, so I'll, I'm gonna leave this open to you as far as your strategy for for growing a following. Sure. So I'll go back to where it first started. What I was originally doing at the paint store, Sherman Williams was, and it actually worked out because this is when COVID started. So we were only doing phone in orders. Like you had to call in the order, and we would deliver it to you curbside. So that gave me the opportunity in that free time from the customer calling in the order to getting at the store, literally just making a video of me, the process of me tending a gallon of paint, right? But when it comes to social media, you always have to grow the content and the page. So I had to come up with new ideas. So I came up with crazy ideas like glow in the dark paint. I did the blueberry paint. Um, all that all that cool stuff with it basically just putting my own little twist on it and this is actually where Sherman Williams ran into the issue of thinking I was taking their paint off the shelves basically stealing it and doing all this crazy stuff with it and then just throwing it away right but I was very careful about what I did for all those videos that I put my own spin on it you could say I purchased those gallons of paint. They were either mistinted gallons or gallons we couldn't use anymore. So I got them at a discounted rate. So that was their number one issue. And the number second issue was disposal of the paint because obviously if you're putting all this all these weird things in the paint, you can't use it so it goes to waste. Um I don't know Actually, it's actually funny. The waste management day where you can dispose of like chemicals and stuff like that is at Hawking College. So that's where I, for those gallons, there, was, there wasn't that many. Let's say about 10. And I gave those, disposed of those properly. And for the video, for the ones that you could still use and they were just cool colors, I just couldn't use them for my videos anymore. I actually donated them to either Passionworks or Habitat over there in uh, in Athens. But the strategy was just to continue to come up with new ideas, be consistent with it, engage with followers, and it, it should take off from there. That was my whole reason behind it. Awesome. Um, so I think this is probably a good time to open it up and check to see if anybody has any questions for Tony, um, anything that maybe uh, you might have come up with while we were going through the deck. Go ahead, Jamie. Okay, so I frequent TikTok, uh, and I, I'm i sure that you've noticed there's different trends, and there's different sure. like, challenges and whatever that people do. And I wondered if you mm -hmm. had done anything to kind of be in that crowd. Like, I know a lot of them are like dances, so you can't really do the dances, but they're ones that are right. like, uh, uh, like the, the yeah. aesthetic ones or whatever. 
Right. So when it comes to trends, um, obviously my channel being specific to paint and paint mixing, color creation, I can't do every single trend. But the big thing on TikTok is trending songs. Like if there's a trending song that everyone's using, it can be used for multiple different kinds of videos. And that brings up the engagement and likelihood that your video will be seen by more people. Yeah, definitely. So... I guess for, like I said, I mean, there's certain trends that I can and can't do, but I try to, if there is one that I can put my own creative spin on it, I'll try to do it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, um, this is Coral. I'm the program manager for the fashion design and retail merchandising program at Hawking. And my family's here listening in with me. And my husband would like to ask you a question. Sure. Okay, what's up? Um, I was curious how much independence you have now with your brand, kind of since, um, you know, working with that company in Florida. Like, how much independence do you, do you maintain, or did you, like, choose to try to, like, carve out for your own brand to potentially like exist outside of that company? Or are you completely tied to that company? Does that make sense? Right. So, um, it is a partnership opportunity that I took with Florida paints. They, um, we basically got to the deal with basically where I get to create the content that I want, the content that I feel that needs to be put out there. And they, we actually developed my own line of paint that will be sold through e-commerce and at Florida Paints. So I guess um, independence wise, I can't really get into the logistics of the partnership, but the biggest part of it and the most important is that I am free to be creative and develop my own channel, if, that, if that's the answer you were looking for. Yeah, I think so. I mean, just curious, like if, like if, as you creatively grow, you know, like, and as your followers like amass, and that's kind of like also mm -hmm. outside of potentially the, like, that's your channel, like as it grows, like, um, and takes off, like, how do, how do you, have you thought about how to splinter that off into other avenues outside of the paint, paint company? Does that make sense? Of like your creative uh, platform that you have developed? Like your your followers, like do they surpass the followers of the paint company? Does that make sense? Um, you know, I've taken. Oh, uh, they surpassed it. The the thing with four. Um, in my opinion, it's not done correctly. Um, it's not very inter. It's because when we go on these different social media platforms, we go there to be entertained by things we want to see. The paint industry does a terrible job of doing that. So what I do is utilize those short videos that people are engaging with, like on YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, and TikTok. Um, but yeah, I kind of lost your question there, but... Um, that's basically what I am trying to, I guess, market paint in a new way. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cool story. All right, cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Cool. Does anybody else have um, any questions for Tony? Go ahead, Jamie. Sorry, I have a lot and I was waiting to make sure that other people had a turn before I continued. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing that, uh, I mean, specifically interests me because I uh, used to be an art major is uh, your interest in uh, color theory. So I wondered if you, um, like what, what exactly did you do to kind of delve into that and how did you apply that to your TikToks? 
Well, you know, I learned so much about color theory when I first started at Sherman Williams because that's essentially the job you. So I've dealt with so many homeowners, um, really trying to narrow down. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have painted your houses or painted at all in general, but I like to say that the hardest part about painting is literally picking the color. Um, because there's so many different options. Like I had said, you really have to understand how color moves with different lighting, different, um, different, even like where windows are positioned in your home and how that will make you feel and go about your day. So that is where I gained my interest into color theory. Um, and like I said, I helped, I had helped so many people pick out certain colors for their room that I felt would, you know, make the room feel more open or maybe flow better. And it really is crazy how our eyes work with color, um, how we perceive things through, through color. I mean, the emotions can literally be based off of colors being put together in st certain scenarios. So that's where I developed my interest in the color theory. And what I'm trying to do now on my platform and through my content is develop, I guess, more informational um, style videos about how color theory is important and what, it, and what it can do for you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And Marie, I am making you a moderator. You should be Good to use your mic. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, I guess my question is like, did you see yourself going into this career? Like, did you see yourself, you know, possibly having a brand, like a paint brand and being able to do this? Did you like see yourself doing that when you were starting to do all of this? Or did you just, you know, it was an opportunity that opened up and you just took it? So my original plan before I even started making TikTok videos was I really liked working at Sheridan Williams and in the paint industry so much that I literally had an internship lined up to go into management and sales for Sherwin before COVID. So my initial plan was to continue my career through paint and the paint company. Um, when I started to develop the TikTok page, I started doing research and saw myself almost as trying to market paint in a new way. So that's where my marketing sense came in. And my initial goal was to develop that presentation, show it to Sherwin and land some sort of, um, I guess another internship of some sort to develop that page and develop Sherwin Williams brand through, through that channel. Um, so yeah, I guess you could say at a certain point when I met when I made that presentation and wanted to bring it to Sherwin is when I wanted to be a full time content creator and boost up the pain industry in a different way. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. And Patty, you should be good to use your mic as well. So this is kind of a fun question to ask you. Um, sure. Is there ever like an ugly collar that you've ever had to make? And um, like how many different colors have you like came up with? Oh, uh, <laughs> like I would, it's, it has to be over like, it probably is at least over like 250. Um, I mean, like, that's where that consistency factor comes in. I mean, I made it like part of my routine to basically develop a new video, new color every day. Um, so I hadn't actually even really thought about how much I had made, but until you asked, but that's actually crazy. So yeah, I'd say over, over 250. And for my, 
I don't know if I mentioned this yet. I in a few weeks here, we're actually going to be launching the Toaster Paints e-commerce website where you'll be able to buy merchandise and my paint. And I've developed a color palette so far of about 20 colors of ones that I created myself and um, we're going to be putting out there. The approach we're going to be taking with this, though, is also a little bit different and hasn't been done before in the industry is you know how when you go to a paint store you go to the color wall and there's literally like thousands of different colors different color families we're, we're starting to realize um, that consumers don't really want to have it's almost overwhelming to have that many options so we're gonna limit the color palette to around 30 to 50 different colors and see how that takes off from there see which ones do well and which ones don't that's awesome that's with your um with your brand yes great well thank you thank you patty all right dylan you should be all set to use your mic Hello, uh, my question is going to address more the social media marketing aspects. What sort of advice could you give somebody maybe in a slightly different industry um, on how to start using things like TikTok and social media to develop their own personal brand and help them launch their own sort of uh, career? Is it just consistency? Um, I know you mentioned doing a lot of research. Could you el uh, elaborate on that? Definitely, man. So... Number one, I guess the real number one thing is finding your passion and something that you really care about and want to push out to other people, right? Get your word out there. Um, I guess that would be the the thing that was helped me be successful is you could tell through, and you can tell through different content which people care and which one's basically an advertisement, right? Um, put your own spin on it. Um, do really just be yourself on it on, in your content. Don't do anything that fits the narrative at first. Kind of do your thing, see how it plays out. Um, yeah, and then that that's where the um, the research comes in. What's uh? Do you mind me asking? If, are you trying to start your own um, like channel for your for your thing? Uh, I'm actually a, a, a music business uh, student, and I'm helping an artist develop. Um, and my my viewpoint is going to be um, more as like a uh, a social media platform for other artists, trying to help them with their stuff. Oh, awesome, awesome! Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's such a cool idea. Just, I mean, don't think about it too much at first, but you'll start once you start putting putting videos out consistently. Understand how it's supposed to go, how it's going to reach more people, and you should be good from there, I should say. And if it's if it's not working out, if things aren't working out, just switch it up a little bit. Um, get better with video editing. I mean, on TikTok, that's how I started out. I just started out using my iPhone and the cutting tools on the app, and that's how it developed from there. Super simple. Sure, thank you. No problem. And Coral, you should be good to use your mic as well. This is this is our husband again, Matt. <laughs> sorry. Well, hello. Um, yeah, what's up? Sorry. Hi. Um, have you thought about like dealing with other kind of like um, codings uh, industries or codings kind of uh, genres? Like I'm a ceramicist and I can think of like um, ceramic companies that deal with glaze, that have glaze products. It's still kind of coating, right? A glaze, just sure. like paint. Like I think, like totally, f you know, it fits kind of your idea. Same platform and aesthetics of like mixing and the kind of the palatability of like material you know, and making material just look delicious, you know. And how that right. kind of can branch out. I don't know. I to other coatings or if you're just I mean, or what you're. Yeah, if that's. So I'll it seems like a, a transition. Um, I have seen content on TikTok 
all, all Instagram of epoxy pours. Have you seen those too? I have. Like those are super super satisfying. Basically, epoxy coatings being mixed together. You know, I try to. I really just have that passion for um, paint. I look. I like to look at paint as like my own canvas. And putting the colors together is really the art and what color it will come out to be. Um, I know I know a decent amount about wood stain too, but I stick to paint and and sometimes stain just for the fact I'm more knowledgeable about it. I have a good idea of what's the turn that's going to be on each color depending on the base, what colorants I use. Um, but that is a good question. I don't think I have really thought about branching out into different coatings yet but it's also a possibility in the future like i said you got to keep that creative mind open and keep things new thanks again no problem cool um and as a side note for anyone that wants to ask a question in the chat that is now open um if you don't want to use your mic um with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and give mic rights to um, Dillinger. So if you still have a question, you should be able to enable your mic and ask. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right, good. Hey, Tony, I don't really have a question, but my son, Cooper, uh, just wants to say something to you. Yeah, oh, um, cool. Yeah, so. Hey, I follow you on TikTok, and I'm a really big fan, and I can't wait to see your new videos. Cooper, I appreciate that, man. You are the best. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks, Danny. Keep it up, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Bye, guys. Bye. That's adorable. <laughs> um, does anyone have any other questions for Tony? Uh, hi again. Um, <laughs> uh, I had a couple things. Um, the first thing was because you said you got two hundred thousand on YouTube. Did you get the silver play button yet? Uh, I got the um, redemption code for it and I put it in. But what I'm realizing with YouTube, my YouTube channel is pretty new. Um, I'd say I've only been on it for like five months. Mm -hmm. Um. What I'm starting to realize about YouTube is that the process of everything takes a super long time. Like oh, yeah. getting monetized, getting my account monetized took forever. Um, getting my channel verified took forever. So I'm sure it'll be here within like the next month. But yes, I did accept my uh, redemption code to get it. Okay. I figured that was going to be the answer because I, I know that YouTube's like that. Uh, but I was hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> it's unfortunate that it's like that, but it's it's. I, I'll I'll make a video about it when I get it. Maybe I'll like pour paint on it or something. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Right. And then I noticed in the chat too, Emily. Um, just so we we got it out loud. Um, another takeaway that Emily said she loves is um just keeping everything simple, be flexible and authentic. Uh, people can tell immediately when you're not being real. Oh, exactly. That, that, that's another super important thing about creating content is there's that fine line between an advertisement and authentic content. Um, you have to, you don't want everything to be an ad. Obviously, I try now I try to incorporate my own line of paint in it, but that's not really the basis of video. I want it to be about the art of mixing paint and creating color. So yes, that is that is a, that is a great takeaway. I'm glad that was recognized. Um, Rosemary, did you have a question? So I have like a fun question, and then like I have a comment to say. Um, sure. The fun question is: Have like have you ever been like walking outside or whatever, or like someone just like. I guess recognizes you from your TikToks. Like, have you ever had like that situation ever happen? Yeah, I've had it happen a few times now. It was more so in Orlando than it was in Athens, because I guess right when that 
channel took off and got all the media attention. I literally left Athens like a few days after that. But in Orlando, I've had people like in the store or at like the bars and stuff come up and like say something about it. So yeah, that part about it's pretty cool too that it reaches that many people and they're able to recognize me through my content. And I hardly even show my face in those videos too, which is also pretty cool. Yeah. And then um, my comment is that I know for me, like I was on TikTok a lot when COVID hit and mm -hmm. it was a very stressful time and very confusing time for everyone. And I guess I want to just say thank you for making like really satisfying videos. I don't know why it's satisfying, but it is. Um, yeah. I watched a lot of paint videos during quarantine. So it was really, it was really cool to see that you were willing to do this and thank you well thank you for saying that i appreciate that uh i was happy to be doing it it really made my quarantine a lot better um and that was the goal too was to just help people out through the entire process with it so thank you we had a question in the chat too sierra asked um she said, well, this isn't really a question on the business side, but what is your favorite paint that you've made? Ooh, you know, I actually made a galaxy paint color using like little alcohol dye bottles and pigments and glitter. And it came out super cool. That was probably one of my more popular videos or the blueberry one, because I mean, that was the one that really, I guess, define the page and the creator itself it was kind of doing that out of the box thinking um and by the way a lot of people ask me this those blueberries did not tint that gallon of paint i just kind of did it more for like the aesthetic of it and you cannot tint paint with uh with blueberries it was just yeah more of the idea of it you can't use orange juice either you know the, the crazy thing is is we actually did product tests on um a, paint, a gallon of paint with blueberries and the orange stuff. Paint will hide and mask. It, paint is made to, it has the properties to block out stuff that's not supposed to be there, like blueberries and orange juice and stuff like that. So it really doesn't affect the paint at all. We just figured that it's not really, we didn't really know how long it would take for something to, I guess, go wrong with it once it's applied. But, from the initial thing, it really, it really just covered it all up. That's what paints made to do. That's fair. Cool. Um, I guess last call for questions, just to make sure everyone has uh, gotten um, every every one of their questions answered. Diane said biochemistry. Biochemistry. As far as the paint. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not I'm not too familiar with the uh, I guess the chemistry of it. That's something I'm also trying to learn here at Florida Paints. They want me to incorporate, but um, yeah, we did that that little analysis of the paint and just to see what happened with it. But yeah, yeah, blueberries, orange juice, um, coffee grounds. Yeah, the coffee ground one. You know what's crazy? I actually saw someone. Coffee grounds, if you put enough in it, it will tint that paint. It will bleed in, into the into the paint of it. I saw a video of someone actually doing that. So that's where that idea came from. I love it. That's so great. Well, cool. Tony, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you doing this again. Thank you so much. This has been incredibly insightful. Um, just the the approach that you take the how you've kind of defined your target um, and you're using the tools to reach your target that's popular with them just from coming at it from from the marketing perspective um, I, I this has been great for me I think this has been great for for our students um, again I sincerely appreciate you and I just learned that blueberries tent snow thanks to Diane what <laughs> Is that in the chat? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. But I really do. I appreciate you guys having me come on and explain my story. I love telling the story, what I do every day, and how I basically got to where I am today. 
and it really is just it's funny because it is something as simple as tinning paint if you have enough passion and a story behind it it you can do anything with it so that's what i love to tell people i appreciate you having me talk to everyone it was super cool and it's so yeah, yeah. thank you Absolutely. Well, best of luck to you, Tony, in Florida. I'm sure we will see you na see your name again if we don't have you back for another chat. Um, <laughs> you'll be up to something, I'm sure. But again, thank you so much. Thank you to everyone that joined. Um, and yeah, have we're ending a little early, but um, have a fabulous evening. And Patty would like to send you snow from Ohio because we've got a few inches of it. Yeah, we don't really have any in Florida. I'm not missing it too much, but, uh, you know, that's just how it goes, the weather. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> yeah, if anyone wants to follow Tony on any of the socials, um, it's the same at every site, right, at Tonester right. Bank? Right, yep. Okay, um, perfect. Uh, I guess before we go, Brianna does have one question that she just posted, um, if, if you have time. Um, so she asked, do you make money off of TikTok? Um, like if you, once you hit like a certain number of followers or viewers? Um, you know, for TikTok, I believe you just had to have over like 10,000 views total on your page. It's really not that much. Um, but the, the pay, I don't really focus on that stream of income. Um, it's not the greatest, but what... Another careful step that I took was to make sure that I was not monetizing my account while working at Sherwin Williams just because of the whole, you know, I can't be making money off their products kind of thing. So that was something I care about. But now I, um, oh wait, you have to have at least 10,000 with at least a hundred K views. Okay. That make that's probably it. But yeah, that, that, that's my story about that. Fair enough. Cool. Um, well, Tony, thank you again. Have a fabulous evening and best of luck thank to you in Orlando. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you right. guys. Bye everybody.